The last time I brewed an American Amber Ale was probably two or two and a half years ago, so I'm really excited to get brewing with this one today. We are making an American Amber Ale that is bordering on the edge of a red IPA in terms of hoppiness. This is a very hoppy American Amber Ale with classic West Coast hops and just a ton of character, I'm hoping. This is a beer that I wanna have ready for the Super Bowl and so I can serve it at the Super Bowl party. Because my beloved Bills were knocked out of the playoffs early, I have to say go Niners, but the uh, the red color works for that anyway. So it should be fun uh, regardless of what happens. This beer is probably gonna be an easier one to make if you're a brand new brewer and quite a rewarding one. Amber ales, especially American amber ales, are really, really nice balanced beers that have a really expressive hop character and a really expressive malt character. Something that works really, really well in tandem if you play correctly with the ingredients. They honestly were really popular back in like the earlier days of craft beer. I think they've waned off in popularity a little bit, but man, they're good beers. Before we jump into this video, I want to give a shout out to a couple organizations for helping make it possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, where you can find all the ingredients you need to make this batch of beer on their website. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply, who makes the system I'll be using to brew the beer today. That's the 10 gallon, 240 volt claw hammer system. This recipe is gonna start out with 11 pounds of raw pale malt. Uh, and then we're gonna add to that two pounds of Best Malt's Red X malt, which is a really awesome malt. Red X is really cool. It's like a blend between a caramel malt and a Munich malt. Uh, you get the best of both worlds, honestly. It's hard to make it cloyingly sweet, but it also really brings in a lot of that rich kind of caramel flavors and has good diastatic power. That will boost the red color and give us a nice sweet and toasty character. We're gonna add to that one pound of Brees Special Roast, which is a really interesting one. It's like Victory Malt kind of bumped up a notch. So getting a little bit of a toastiness there and um, a nice edge to the malt character. And then to really dial in that red character perfectly, I'm adding in two ounces of chocolate malt. Pretty much every single time I make an amber colored beer, I use a very small amount of some kind of roasted malt to get me that perfect red character. Um, whether it's carafa, roasted barley, or chocolate malt, all three of those will work well depending on what the actual malt color is. Just a little bit is all it takes, a few ounces, basically a handful of crushed uh, roasted malt added into your mash will get you a beautiful red color almost every single time. For hops in a spear, it's all a classic American sea hops. We're going for a total IBU of about 37s, which is high for an American amber ale, but low for a red IPA. So somewhere kind of in the middle of those two styles. So starting out with a bittering addition of half an ounce of Chinook, uh, which would give us about 19, 20 IBUs. Nothing else is going into the boil until the 10 minute mark where we'll add some flavor hops. So we're gonna start with half an ounce each of Cascade, Centennial, and Columbus uh, going in at 10 minutes. And then we'll go for another half ounce each of Cascade, Centennial, and Columbus all going in at zero minutes. That should give us a really nice classic West Coast hop flavor, piney, citrus, grapefruit, kind of character, uh, which should really complement the nice toasty malts we have. And lastly, we're gonna give this a quick and easy dry hop after primary fermentation is complete of about two ounces of Cascade, uh, just for about three to five days uh, to get a nice pleasant floral and citrus character on the nose. For the water profile in this beer, I came up with a little bit more of a minerally profile. I think that will help kind of emphasize the brightness of the hops. There's also a high level of calcium in here to help that beer drop clean faster uh, because it really should be a brilliantly clear beer at the end of the day, despite the dry hops. So we're gonna go for a water profile of 125 parts per million of calcium, 10 parts per million of magnesium, 32 parts per million of sodium, 130 parts per million of chloride, 194 parts per million of sulfate, and 43 parts per million of bicarbonate. In order to get that water profile, I'm starting out with eight gallons of reverse osmosis water and adding to that five grams of calcium chloride, two grams of canning salt, which is sodium chloride, uh, three grams of Epsom salt, and eight grams of gypsum salt. Uh, and then for the yeast in this one, I'm actually really excited to try a brand new yeast. We're going to be using Escarpment Labs House Ale. Um, I've never used Escarpment Labs yeast before at all, but when I was at Homebrew Con, I was walking around the expo and Escarpment had a booth there. One of the guys recognized me and he gave me a packet of this uh, Escarpment House Ale yeast for free. So I'm pretty excited about that. It should be a pretty standard American ale yeast strain, but I am very excited to see how it performs. Escarpment Labs has some pretty cool and hard to find strains 
strains out there. So uh, definitely something to look at checking out yourself as well. And lastly for the mash in this one, I'm gonna be using a technique that I think is gonna help me be able to successfully brew a bit easier while simultaneously taking care of a child. Uh, and that is the overnight mash. Uh, so we're gonna be overnight mashing this one at 152 degrees. Sometimes you can get a higher efficiency than expected and a lower final gravity than expected. That will happen especially if your wort temperature falls off during the process. Because I have that recirculating electric system, I know I'll be able to maintain a steady 152 degrees the entire time, um, but not everybody can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mash in tonight about 10 or 11 o'clock, and then we're gonna let it sit overnight, staying up to temperature, and then tomorrow morning, probably nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll come downstairs and we'll go ahead and continue on with the brew day, ramping up to a boil and just going forth from there. I'm really excited to get this beer going. I've missed drinking amber ales, so let's uh, let's get to it. I started out by adding eight gallons of reverse osmosis water to my 10 gallon 240 volt claw hammer supply system and started to heat that up to the required mash temperature of 152 degrees Fahrenheit. As I was doing this, I milled out all of my grain and got that ready as well as added my water salts into the strike water as it was heating up. Once the strike water was fully heated up, I mashed in with the entire grain bill, stirring it up thoroughly, distributing the grain and breaking up any clumps in the mash. I let the mash recirculate for about 10 minutes before pulling a pH measurement uh, and I found it to be on target at 5.5. Once I took that pH measurement, I turned off the pump and the recirculation but kept the heat on so that it maintained 152 degrees overnight and I came back the next morning to continue brewing. I pulled out the grain basket and I let it drain for about 15 minutes and as I was doing this I also heated it up to a uh, temperature just short of boiling to get a jump start on things. Once I hit that boil, I added in my bittering addition at 60 minutes of half an ounce of Chinook and let the boil continue for another 50 minutes until the 10 minute mark where we added a bunch of things. Firstly, half an ounce each of Cascade, Centennial and Columbus. And then I also added in a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient. 10 minutes later at the zero minute mark, I ended the boil and then I added in half an ounce each of Cascade, Centennial and Columbus. As soon as I added these ingredients, I initiated a whirlpool to uh, coagulate all the hop debris in the center of the kettle to make for an easier transfer. As soon as that whirlpool was complete, I chilled through my counterflow chiller in one pass into my Spike CF5. And I also grabbed an original gravity measurement and found it to be really high compared to what I expected. It was actually about 1065. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that went down the way it did, but it was significantly more efficient of a brew day than I guess I anticipated. Once everything had been fully transferred, I confirmed the pitching temperature of about 65 degrees. It was right on and I pitched my Escarpment Labs house ale yeast. For the fermentation of this beer, you really just wanna have a good, clean American ale yeast uh, and take care of that fermentation to make it as clean as possible. So I'd recommend something like US05, the Chico strain, or the other American ale strain, the American L2 is good. Uh, BRY97 is a great option. You could also use a clean, longer strain as well uh, to get a very, very similar effect. If you wanna pressure ferment this beer, it's certainly a good candidate for that. And of course, Kvike is always an option here as well, specifically a nice, clean strain like Voss fermented on the low and or Lutra as well. Uh, all good options all around. The point here is just to get a nice clean character out of it. If you want to get interesting with it, you could throw an English yeast at it. Uh, that might be kind of cool because you'd probably get less attenuation, more final gravity, and a little bit more mouthfeel. It's a lot of things you can do with this beer. It's relatively easy and simple to ferment, so it shouldn't be too challenging, even with that quick dry hop there. I just would recommend if you are dry hopping the beer, be cognizant about oxidation. The extra malts in here and the lower amount of hops in this beer do make it a little bit more resistant to oxidation than your average American hoppy beer, but that doesn't mean that you should ignore any sort of oxidation risks in general uh, because of that. Just still use good practices with that. When you're dry hopping, try to flush the headspace with CO2 um, and just be cognizant of the oxidation risks when you're packaging as well. Uh, but otherwise, should be a relatively easy beer to take care of. So just to recap, what I'll be doing is fermenting this one at about 65 degrees on the low end with my Escarpment uh, House Ale Yeast. And and so we'll see how that performs, but what I wanna do is just get a good clean beer out of that at the end, and that's what that nice lower temperature will help me achieve. Once that primary fermentation is done, after about a week, I will go ahead and add in my two ounces of Cascade for a dry hop, and we'll probably start getting ready to uh, condition and package relatively shortly after that. So it should be a fun fermentation. I'll catch you guys in a few weeks when it's all ready, and go Niners. Fermentation for this beer actually went way better than anticipated. 
Uh, so normally when you throw a single packet of dry yeast into a 1065 OG wort, you're asking for trouble. This is a very bad idea nine times out of 10. You're gonna get off flavors, you're gonna get fusel alcohols, the beer is gonna have a lot of flaws. You're not gonna get good fermentation byproducts by under pitching in that way. For some reason, uh, this single packet of Escarpment Labs yeast did not care about the OG of this beer, fermented the whole thing down in five days, and was clean as a whistle, and I have no idea how that works. I don't advise following what I did in any way, shape, or form. However, it worked, and uh, that's a cool data point. The yeast absolutely ripped through this beer, getting down to a final gravity of 1012 in five days, uh, which I confirmed a few days later. And once that final gravity was confirmed, I went ahead and added my dry hops, which were two ounces of Cascade, making sure to dry hop this one cold to try and avoid some hop creep that could result. And I left the dry hops in the beer for a few days, uh, just about three or four days, and then I transferred into a keg and got it ready to serve. This beer is called Left on Red, and it comes in at 7% ABV and about 37 IBUs. For the appearance of the beer, it pours a really nice clear scarlet red color. Um, I definitely nailed the color on this one and I'm really happy about that. The head on the beer is an off-white head. It builds really nicely, uh, sticks around for a while as well, and overall, just very happy with the appearance of this one. So now let's go in for aroma. This beer is very aromatic. I'm getting absolutely punched in the face by West Coast hops, which is awesome. Um, I really like that. I'm getting a lot of grapefruit and I'm getting a really nice kind of candied orange character as well. A little bit of like a resiny pine character, but not much. It's mostly taken over by the grapefruit and by the uh, kind of citrusy notes um, of those dry hops, which uh, Cascade really is showing itself uh, in this particular aroma. So let's go in now for mouthfeel. So the mouthfeel on this beer is actually a little bit heavier, uh, a little bit fuller than I anticipated. Um, it has a lot of caramel malts in there, although I was really expecting for that high sulfate to chloride ratio to kind of help aid in the dry feeling finish of this beer. Um, that didn't quite work out the way I planned. It's a bit fuller um, than most amber ales I think I've had, uh, and a little bit fuller than I prefer, but it doesn't take away from the character of the beer too much. The amount of hops that punch through in the flavor department really do help out a lot when it comes to keeping this from feeling like it's overly full. I think that fullness definitely accentuates the malty character of the beer a bit. It doesn't really take away too much otherwise from it, so it's not like a total problem for me, it's just I would have preferred it to be a little bit drier feeling than it really is. This beer works really well for me this time of year. The days are starting to get kind of longer. Yes, it's still pretty cold most of the time, but you get your occasional day where it's not. Um, and the hops in here really scream spring to me. That's really nice, but there's still enough malt and substantialness in the beer to make it satisfying for a colder day. Um, I really like the way that this works out. There's a lot of flavor in this beer, and I'm really overall quite happy with the way it turned out. So let's break it down. Mm-hmm. So first of all, I'm getting a really nice bright hoppy character, lots of citrus, lots of grapefruit. The same candied orange character that was in the aroma is also in the flavor in this one. And it's really quite satisfying. It works really, really well with that little bit of extra kind of caramel character you get from the Red X. There's a very solid West Coast dankness uh, to this particular beer as well. Um, a little bit of that kind of piney resonant character, but not too much of it. Um, it's just barely there. And a very nice balanced bitterness. Um, I did use a rather light hand on the bittering on this beer, despite it being more bitter than your typical amber ale. Um, but it worked out really, really well. And I honestly would not have used any less because of the intense malty character that's behind the rest of this beer. The other cool thing that's going on here is that Cascade contribution um, is really giving this almost like a little bit of a floral minty character. Um, minty is really the wrong descriptor, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is I'm tasting. It's, it's an herbaceous kind of floral character. Um, 
but it is really, really pleasant. And it works very well layered on top of these other character malts we have in here. And the malts come through at the very end. So the hops really hit you up front with the bitterness, with the flavor, and then you get a nice, just satisfying, cereally, um, just biscuity kind of character in the malt. A uh, little bit of sweetness there, little tiny hint of caramel sweetness. There's nothing overly sweet or overboard about the caramel flavor though. It's not even close to being cloyingly sweet. The other cool thing about this is the beer finishes almost like an English beer. It's got that nice rich maltiness to it um, that's very satisfying, but still kind of dry. So you still have a little bit more of an inkling to take of a sip. Minus being a little bit fuller than I expected, it pretty much hits every single note. Every single flavored character I wanted out of it, got it. It's just a little bit hoppier than your average American Amber Ale, and it wants you to know that, that it's also not a red IPA. It's not going to give you that same kind of really aggressive West Coast punch, um, and it's not as bitter. So it really bridges those two styles very nicely, I think, and I'm really happy with the end result. The ABV level is a bit higher than I wanted it to be, but um, at the end of the day, I'm not too upset about that. The color is perfect, that's right on. Um, really, really happy with that. The clarity is there. The only thing I really would criticize about the beer is, again, the mouthfeel just being a little bit too full. I think Red X is honestly responsible for that, so what I would recommend doing if you brew this beer on your own and you don't want that character in the beer is just either increase the sulfate to chloride ratio even more to bring out more of that drying character while simultaneously dialing back the Red X just a Add. You could also lower that mash temperature a little bit to get you a little bit lighter of a body as well. Um, all those things together might actually make for a pretty solid result. Either way, I'm very happy with this beer um, and I hope you brew it because it's a really nice way to bridge the uh, seasons of winter and spring. I think it makes for a, a good opener to your spring season. One last note on the overnight mash method. Once again, this has shown that holding that steady temperature for a duration of 12 plus hours has produced just as good of a beer as otherwise. If anything, it actually increased my efficiency and at no expense. There is no issue with this beer being too dry. In fact, that was not the problem. This is definitely something I want to continue doing in the future. Uh, that method is going to work really, really well for pretty much most beers out there that don't require step mash. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please go ahead, hit that like button before you leave. It costs you nothing. And subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below with your thoughts on the beer, on the methods that I used, on anything else that kind of, yeah, piques your curiosity, I'd love to talk with you about it. If you want to support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt or something else from the merchandise store. You can find that down in the description box. I also have a Patreon, which is also linked in the description box. My patrons are directly responsible for increasing the production value of this channel over the last several years. So all of you have my utmost thanks for that. I also have channel memberships and there's the super thanks button if you want to try either of those options out. They also help me out quite a bit and I am very grateful for them as well. I have an Amazon store in the description box where you can find all of my channel production equipment as well as the uh, homebrewing equipment that's on Amazon that I thoroughly recommend. So if you're curious about some of that stuff, dive into that, check it out. Um, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer. So check those links out for some continued content. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here watching to the end of the video, you have my thanks. Uh, I really put a lot of work into these things and by showing me that you're watching the whole thing, it means a lot to me, shows me what I'm doing is really worth it to you. So this one goes out to you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, cheers.